Hello, folks. It's Pastor Nate. I really hope you're enjoying the deliverance on Chester and some of the other things that we've been showing you. Um, our special thanks to Lloyd Chen and uh, his deliverance ministry for helping us with develop some of these um, assets. As I've said, we really have just tons of this stuff, so it gives us an opportunity to break it out and to really educate those of you who really need the education. So uh, it's late at night here. I'm sorry for your, uh, my appearance, but I wanted to get two more episodes out with Chester. <clears throat> We've got several more uh, coming at you. Uh, fabulous deliverance tonight uh, with a young lady who have been a Christian all her life, uh, which really shows how the enemy uh, can put Christians in bondage. And um, it looks like the uh, power of Jesus is just really increasing and coming through as we're getting more and more information from the enemy that helps you, those in bondage. So, uh, folks, the only announcement, well, probably not the appropriate time, uh, keep an eye out for uh, announcements and just remember that uh, God loves you, absolute, and um, if you feel this is the kind of ministry that you can get behind, you feel that Pastor Nate is a true man of God, after God's own heart, loving his fellow man, loving precious souls, really walking it out. And we ask that you please consider your tithe instead of giving it to potentially a cold, dead church that just really not doing anything with it. So we're not only fighting the enemy on the front lines, when we get money, we're turning around and really helping those who really need it in Pakistan and Kenya and places like that. Okay, so we love you very much. We thank you for any gifts or offerings. Uh, to be honest, nothing's really picked up or increased there. We're getting a lot of conversation and promises, but I'd say little to zero follow-through uh, for the most part. So very disappointing. Uh, we'll be starting a, uh, a job that's going to take five hours a day, minimal, so really seven hours a day. So now I'm going to you know, put into action what I said, that I'm going to work to support the ministry, to pay for your deliverance, okay? Because I love you, and I think that's important. Uh, if I'm going to stand up here brash-faced and look you in the eye and say, you need to give, and if you're not going to give, then I need to be uh, man enough to follow through and pay for your deliverance, and that's how I see it. I love you. God bless you, okay? And we're going to get you free. Uh, then after that, it's up to you. Uh, just know I love you. All right, let's watch every bit of this, folks. Let's learn from this, okay? We love you. God bless. Good night. Yes, sir. Hey, I couldn't hear a thing. Could you hear me? Yes, sir. I could hear you. Yeah, I couldn't hear you. I thought, oh, my gosh, they're choking him down there. You can't even talk. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to go on a tangent there, but... um. Okay, see if you can get that camera on and some light, even if you got to start your car or something. I need to be able to see you because he could be over there choking you. He had you unconscious for 15 minutes at a time the other day, and I get kind of worried about you. Worried about you. Yes. All right, now I'm getting some. Now I'm getting some. Wow, that's wow. real feedback it's there. It's like, a, it's like a, if I say something, my voice just comes right back through my earphones. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, how in the world is that happening? Now, you did something good, good, good. Keep doing whatever you did, yeah. Okay, yes. that's good. All right, I'll open this with prayer, and uh, I'm gonna go after the same sorry son of a gun. Uh, you don't have a knife or gun anywhere near you, do you? No, sir. All right, put the keys in your pocket if you can. You don't have the car running, do you? No, sir. Okay, put them in your pocket. That way I'll at least be able to tell if he's going through your pocket, because what he would do yesterday, is get under the camera and I would start screaming at him and make him stand up and he'd stand up way back there by the steps and he'd just kind of doing like this all over the place so he was definitely trying to get away from me so he would have just taken off with you manifested I guess down the street I mean I don't know your layout so he could have gone you know right into your granny's house with your grandchildren there so <laughs> you know and he's crazy acting when he manifests to you he's, he's just like this he's all up one time it's like you were laying back I gotta find the part, but it's like the angels had you picked up in the air. No strings attached to you, nothing. I mean, he's just crazy acting. I mean, his goal is to hurt you. You understand that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Because sometimes I cut up, but I, I take it real serious. I'm never taking my eye off him. That's just what I'm trying to let you know. 
Okay, here we go. Father, we need you. Power of your beautiful son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us on the cross. And Father, we're coming for full deliverance here. We want Chester to be free of all uh, homosexual thoughts and lust, any type of deviancy, all of it, depression, anxiety, fear, envy, anger, all of it, Father. Our goal is to live a victorious life through Christ like you designed him to live, and if it be your will to carry the word of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody. Assuming that's what you and Jester decide to do, I guess it's more your decision than his. I believe he's willing. I believe he's a good man. I believe he's hungry for it. So I'm going to tell you right now, Occupant, if you're in there in the name of Jesus, i got to have some words with you. If you're not there, if your legal authority is gone and you're out, do not manifest. Then I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the next in line. Next in line, in the name of Jesus, manifest and come up right now. I'm going to call down Holy Ghost fire. I'm not going to play. i got things I want to do, and he's got to get to work. Who am I looking at in the name of Jesus? Right now, give me your name. In the name of Jesus. Give me your name, demon. I'm not playing with you. You better speak clearly. And speak in English right now in the name of Jesus. Who are you? My name is Santo. Santo. Have we ever fought before? First time. Well, I'm Pastor Nate Santo. And I know who you are and I know what you are. What's your area of torment inside him? Answer now in the name of Jesus. You deal with him how, Santo, in the name of Jesus, answer, do not lie. I molest him in his sleep. Molest him in his sleep, that's no. Molest him in his sleep. Are you a male or female, Santo? I thought so. How long you been in him in the name of Jesus? Since he was seven. Because of what his uncle or his cousin did to him? Yes. You're a perverted individual, ain't you, Santo? How many demons, you, how many root spirits you got underneath you, Santo? It's ten. How many? In, in the name of Jesus, answer. It's 230 of us. Ah, uh, come on now. There's more than that in the name of Jesus. You got a legion of you, ain't you? Uh, Angels there tormenting you? They got a, a spear on your side? Got a, a sword on your side? You see the angels right there next to you yet? In the name of Jesus. Answer. Hmm. Santa, I'll tell you what, every one of them underneath you is going to come up right now in the name of Jesus. I'm canceling their assignment. They can yawn out. They can sneeze. Go. In the name of Jesus, I want every one of them out. Get out. In the name of Jesus, I ain't putting up with this foolishness, all these bad dreams. You're doing this to him and his dreams, ain't you, in the name of Jesus? Yeah, molesting his spirit. He goes and thinks it's him having these dreams and you doing all kinds of nasty things. I want every one of these root spirits, the, the ones underneath you. I don't care if they're dead humans. I don't care if they're other demons. I don't care what they are. I want them gone in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to put Holy Ghost fire on you quick. Get them out. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Everything underneath Santo in the name of Jesus, come out. I cancel your assignment. Angels, put a ring around him right now so he can't get out of the car and cannot move. I'm going to put a bloodline around him right now in the name of mighty Jesus. I just draw that bloodline of protection right around him right there. And Santo, just so you know, I mean business. I'm going to put the blood of Jesus right there on top of your head, on top of your hands, and your neck right there. Father, I ask whatever I feet put on me and the physical be on him and Santo in the spirit world. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing like the blood of Jesus. Get your mouth full, Santo. Ah, ah, ah. That's the blood of Jesus, my man. That's good stuff right there. It will set you straight. 
You still there, Shanto? In the name of Jesus, answer. Yeah, you need to go. You want to go to the pit. You got all your, uh, your spirits out. Go. I want them out now. In the name of Jesus, I want to see some yawning. I want to see some coughing. It better be throwing up. You better be doing something to get them out. Now, you got about five seconds, and we're putting that Holy Ghost fire on you. 1,001. 1,002. Come on. Let's go. 1,003. 1,004. Come on. Up in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. 1,005. Come on. They better keep coming. Father, please, if we can, I think Santo wants a dose of Holy Ghost fire right there on top of the head. Hallelujah. We give it to him real good. In the name of mighty Jesus. That phone's still on? Santos, you got to go to the pit. You got all your people out answering the name of Jesus. Oh, you, you, you don't think you're going? Hmm. You know you're going. In the name of Jesus, you better be getting them out. Come on, let's go. Up and out. Up and out. I want them all gone. Turn them to the pit. Turn them to the pit. And just keep them in the seat. I can't see them. I told, uh, what's his name, to turn on the uh, car light. I just can't hardly see. Make sure he can breathe. In the name of Jesus, Santos. Make sure he can breathe. And just please. Make sure Chester can breathe, please. And Father, if we need Holy Ghost fire on Santos, please, we bring it down upon him to release Chester from his grip. Come on up, spirits. Ah, oh, spirit. Santos, can you hear me in the name of Jesus? Chester, at you? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Back conscious. I'm conscious. I'm, I'm. It's scared, boy. It's like it's like a force here in my hand and try to put it around my throat to choke. Me. That's what I thought. All right, listen, Chester. You got to do what I ask. Turn on your lights now. This is where you're being hard-headed, and it's going to get you hurt. Might run your car, do whatever you got to do, but you can't. We can't play games with this. I heard you choking, and I called down the angels and I said, "Angels, make sure he can breathe." And they came down and pulled his hand off. See, he was going to try to kill you. See, you, you missed all that yesterday. That's what I'm saying. It's not a game. They'll try to kill you. They'll run something in your eye. They'll do whatever they can to kill you. There we go. But I got to be able to see you. Will your battery hold? Yeah, because yeah, somehow your light was off. It was pitch dark. And I heard you choking. I don't know if you heard me, but I said, Angels, please clear his throat. Make sure he can breathe in. And I said, Santos, you better not be choking him. And that's exactly what he was doing, wasn't he? Yes, sir. And you were sitting there choking, going, Gosh, I sure hope Pastor Nate can hear this, right? All right, that was Santos. He came in when you were molested at seven years old. You got your cousin or uncle or whoever that was to thank for that. And um, he got 230 more just like him in there. Right or under him. And um, he molested you in your sleep. So if you had bad dreams about being molested or molesting or anything like that, that's him. That's what he does. Does that sound familiar? Yes, sir. I said, what do you do in the name of Jesus? He didn't want to answer anything. Molest him in his sleep. Uh, I got the age that he came in, seven years old. Oh, they're proud of their work. I mean, they, they really look at it like a craft, you know. So he goes up into your dreams and puts all that sick stuff on you. I think we got it few or several of his underlings out. It's just hard to tell, you know, when I can't see real good. So you just keep working to try to get a laptop or something where I can see good because I think we could, if we put in three or four good hours with some good uh, visual where I could see him some light, I think we could really do some damage. Uh, we
let me see, 15 minutes. We got time for one more? Yes, sir. All right, take your deep breath. Get air in your lungs. I got the light on, get your keys. I guess somewhere where they, I don't know. I'll let you handle that. I just got to be able to see. And I told what's his name? Papa, whatever his name was, the one from yesterday, the big one we were battling, I said, if you ain't there, I don't want to talk to you. I said, so don't. Yeah, so, um, so that's one of molestation. Then we got, what's his name? Uh, Octuan. Then, all right. In the name of Jesus, the next principality or demonic entity that torments Chester in any way, shape, or form. Not Occupon and not Santos, unless Santos is still there. Manifest, come up right now in the name of Jesus, because you are going out. You are going to the pit in the name of Jesus. We want to know who you are, and we don't make sure you're going. In the name of Jesus, come up right now. We're not playing with you. Anything to do with depression, anxiety, bad dreams, torment, abduction. It don't matter to us. In the name of Jesus, make yourself known. In the name of Jesus. Watch your right hand. There we go. Here he comes. State your name, demon, in the name of Jesus. Who are you? Look at me right here in the eyes, man to man. What's your name? I'm Pastor Nate. I'm the one don't be sending it to the pit. Who are you? In the name of Jesus, answer. Who are you? Answer in the name of Jesus. Everybody answers in the name of Jesus. Darlon, what do you do, Darlon? What's your area of torment in the name of Jesus? Darlon, so you must work for Maka, work for uh, death and destruction, Maka or somebody like that. How long have you been around, Darlon, in the name of Jesus? I've been around 5,000 years. 5,000 years, you must have known Cain, you remember uh, Cain and Abel, in the name of Jesus? You must have been a big old Nephilim giant. How tall were you on the earth, Darlon? Nine or nineteen? You were short. You weren't much of a Nephilim giant. Nine feet tall. That's not huge. You're still pretty tall. What continent did you live on, Darlon? Were you over in Asia? Were you in uh, Europe? Where were you when you were alive in the name of Jesus? Turkey, Darlene from Turkey. You have your own little kingdom and set up over there in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Darlene, how many uh, spirits are underneath you inside him in the name of Jesus? Answer. 7,000 of others. 7,000. That's, that's a big legion right there. That's about a legion and, yeah. All right, here's what we got to do, Darlene. Either I'm going to put Holy Ghost fire on you. You know how it works. Uh, we got to get rid of all those spirits. So in the name of Jesus, I am canceling their assignment. So uh, this death and destruction, you're the one who turned off his, uh, or tried to manifest while he was driving last night down the road in the name of Jesus? Did you say yes? Yeah, you were trying to kill him. Yeah. Going to. <laughs> you're going to in the name of Jesus yeah actually the only place you don't end up is in the pit but you know that already I can tell so you're probably just trying to impress Satan by saying all that so Darlon I need those spirits out I cancel the assignment father go ahead and hit Darlon right now please with holy ghost fire right through the top of his head just as hard as you can split his body in half please father in the name of Jesus 
Sit down, darling. I'm right there. You're not moving a bit in the name of mighty Jesus. Right of Jesus. You just endure it. You just endure the pain. You've been causing other people pain all these years. Time you get you some. It's time you get some, big boy. You're causing everybody else pain. Light him up, please, Father, in the name of mighty Jesus. Let's just surge right through his body. Let Darlon enjoy some good pain himself like he cost everybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's you, Darlon, or that uh, Chester back? Is that you, Darlon? Yeah, how about that good old Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus? You just sit there and endure it. Holy angels, hold him back. Cancel every one of these assignments of these spirits under Darlon. Get out in the name of Jesus right now. Get out in the mighty name of Jesus. Leave them keys alone right now. Angels, pull those keys away from him. In the name of Jesus, pull those keys away from him. Put them in the back seat. Please, angels, in the name of Jesus. In the name of mighty Jesus, the keys go in the back seat. In the name of Jesus, there will be no driving or cranking that car, and that way you're manifesting. In the name of Jesus, you will sit there and endure this, and you will kick out every spirit underneath you right now in the name of Jesus. Darlene, I want you out. You're going to the pit right now in the name of Jesus. You're going. You're too dangerous. Get right now to the pit. Let's go. Head first. I want you swimming in lava. Let's go. In the name of Jesus. Holy angels, extract him. Pull him up and out. All spirits underneath. Darlene, let's go. Is that you, Chester? Darlene, do you hear me in the name of Jesus? Sir? I'm going to put more Holy Ghost fire on you right now. Okay. Darlene, you better be out. You better be out. And you better take every one of them with you. You're going again. I'm not playing with you. You're not killing anybody. Chester, where are your keys? I was trying to get the angels to throw them in the back seat, but Darlene had your keys and was trying to start that car. we got to be more responsible than this. I'm kind of being more flexible than I normally would, but we got no business doing deliverance in a car. That thing was trying to start the keys, and I started the car, and I finally realized that the keys were rattling, and um, that he was trying to start it, because he was saying that he was going to kill you. That's Darlon. He's uh, in charge of death. Real deep voice. He talks like this. He was the one who tried to manifest in you last night when you were driving. Mm. Yep. He, had, he has 7,000 spirits underneath him in you. Mm. Still kind of scary, ain't it? He's from Turkey. He had his kingdom in Turkey. He's nine feet tall. So he's a Nephilim, probably second or third generation. Yeah, it's scary. That's why I need, that's why I'm glad you're taking it serious now. We can't be sitting in cars with you. <laughs> you need to be in like a, a room and a chair and a table. And I, I got to be able to see you. And I really need you to get that computer. I mean, don't go out and spend money, but we got to find a way to get it where I can see you. See, I can only see you through a little sliver like that. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I need to be able to see you and control. I mean, this is serious business. You got some serious stuff in there, man. That thing came up and it breaks through your body and you're groaning and carrying on and uh, in the name of Jesus, who might you be? Darlon. Mm. He can't be lying. He's got too many answers that are right at the tip of his tongue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nobody makes up that they're from Turkey. And that's one of the oldest parts of the world. Hmm. I'm bringing him up in order of power. So he's about third or fourth. Uh, who was the other one we just had? We just had uh, Santo. Yes, sir. I don't know where you got death from. Were you ever in combat? Yes, sir. You were in combat? Am I doing what now? Were you ever in combat in the military? 
Well, I come back. Yes, sir. I was on uh, transportation, but I. Got shot at? I was in transportation. Did you ever get shot at? Yeah, a couple of times, and both times it was just IEDs, though. Yeah, okay. All right, you're heading over to work? Yes, sir. All right, Father, I ask that you keep Chester safe, please, in the name of Jesus. If we could assign more than one angel with him, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that he doesn't manifest, that he be protected. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right, brother, we'll see you tomorrow. You know what to do if they start coming up, right? All right. In the name of Jesus, get out. Get out of me right now in the name of Jesus, okay? Yes, sir. All right, you all right? Yes, sir, I'm all right. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. God bless. Good night. Uh, hey, Chester. Yes, sir. Hmm. You don't have any better light, do you? That's yeah, pretty good. I don't want to get in trouble like we did last time. Uh, hold on, let me tell this guy. Um, excuse me one second. Oh, where's Lloyd? Alrighty. So what else going on? Any any questions or anything? I'm sure, you know, sometimes you'll text me some things. Uh, come on, you got to open up and talk. Well, um, nothing other than, um, like I said, still, I just feel it. Feel that that depressed spirit once I get inside that prison. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I would say that. There's so many demonic entities in there. Okay, so just think about this. So the enemy's trying to get you because they know you're breaking loose and getting free. So the the gatekeeper, the highest ranking enemy, is gonna say. Per Satan, the feek all attack this man. So yeah, they're gonna all come on you because they're there, they're in that territory. So you gotta go in and before you go in, you cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. You know, that's where you open the prayers up and you go, okay, now I'm going into a structure that I don't control. All I can control is me. So you get on your knees by your car or whatever and you say, Father, I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I ask for protection while I'm in here. I come against all evil spirits in the name of Jesus. And when you feel any heaviness or depression, because you understand, or I hope you do, because I've said it a, you know, a bunch of times, that there's never going to come a day where you just all of a sudden get free and you never have to cast out another demon. That just does not happen. I want to make sure that you understand that, that you're going to be walking in Walmart, Something's going to happen, you're going to have to come against that demon. So you're going to have to get used to kind of, you know, I don't expect you just to, you know, sit up there on the top tier and start just blasting out deliverance prayers all through the prison. I mean, you'd get fired probably. But yes. you got to find a way to kind of, you know, hand over your mouth like this or, you know, in the name of Jesus, get off me right now. I bind you up according to Matthew 18, 18. Pull out your little power sheet out of your pocket or on your iPhone. So I just want to make clear that, yeah, you don't have to go on offense to these things. And I think you know that, because when they attacked you in the car, you know, you you kind of responded and rose to the occasion, didn't you? Yes. But you don't be, it's going to be a lot less than what we're doing now. I mean, now we're going and stirring them up to pull them out, you know? Yes, sir. All right, what else you got? And that, and like I say, y'all, I know they attacked me a lot when, when I'm at work, and, and it's, it's, it's always like I'm always prompted to that sleeping, that heaven that's not getting to work. Well, you also don't get enough sleep either, though, right? What do you sleep, two or three hours a night? 
Yes, well, I don't really sleep at night. You know, I, if I can, well, I mean, I go somewhere in the prison, I will, but not really. No, I meant. I'm sorry. Forget day or night. I mean, whatever your sleep cycle is, how many hours of sleep do you get in a 24-hour period? Uh, um, I had to say, um, in a 24-hour period, probably about maybe maybe four or five hours. Okay, that's not too bad. You, you, your body's programmed to get six to eight, though, so you're running what they call sleep deficit. So you're you're gonna have to get that quality sleep to run through your dream cycles and all that so that'll help a lot the weaker they can get you the more weak your spirit is the more entry and access they have to you okay so the only reason they're coming on you real heavy at work is they want to get you fired so just realize that anything related to your work relationships me and you uh, that's where I got so frustrated this morning it's not so much me and money because I'm pretty well used to it. Nobody really contributes. And the reason they don't is the enemy has control of them. And I just kind of let go, let loose on, on you. And it's so frustrating to see. You think it has to do with money. You're probably my highest paid person that I work with. See, So you see yourself as this broke guy has no money. That's what they've done to you. You're a state employee. If you're making $24,000 a year or 18, you're the highest paid person that I work with. You see? So, but you see yourself as broke because they've made you feel that way. And, and either way, whether Pastor Nate's here or not, you need to. If you don't talk to me again, I, I am instructing you to go tithe 10% of your income and you will start receiving abundance. God is very clear on this. If you don't do that, you know what happens. You know exactly what happens. Yes, sir. You start losing jobs, you start losing automobiles, relationships. So, you know, today I just kind of went off on you. It was wrong. I let the enemy get on me, but I get so frustrated because, you know, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but, you know, I've got the second interview tomorrow. I'm going to probably have to shut this down for the most part and go work and pay for everybody's deliverances because nobody wants to give any money. And it's not just you. It's hundreds of you before, but it's the enemy. The, 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 the two or three people who give big money are people I haven't even done re deliverance on. What's the difference? They got the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit allows them, hey, we need to contribute to this. You're not in a position to feel the Holy Spirit, I'm guessing. Now, I'm not about to tell a man what he feels and doesn't feel. I will not do that, you see. But I think we both know it's been a smothering thing you've been feeling in your life. And we're trying to break through with that. Now, one thing you don't have to do also, speaking of checklist but it's my job to mentor you if you just coming home and getting in the bed with the old lady every night you just it's going to have to end somewhere you don't have to run her off but you don't have to say we cannot have relations you need to put her in a bed if you don't be roommates and you get down and ask her to marry you if that's what you're going to do but you know papa's not going to just ignore that you know that you know enough about him to know he will not just let you slide on that do you agree or disagree? I agree. Okay. I mean, just handle your business. You don't need me to, you know, talk to you like a kid, but i just been through it. I know how he is. <laughs> and it's just one day, all of a sudden, it just stops. The deliverance stops. The gifts stop. And all of a sudden, it's like one thing after another, and you start going, man, am I cursed? I said, no, you're just in disobedience. That's all it is. And it can be tithing. It can be relationships. It can be... Oh, gosh, it can be any number of things. It can be lying, living a lie, not forgiving. It can be, that's why it's just so important, just laying it all out there. But so far, I can't help but think you're not giving this all your best effort because you're getting pretty good deliverance. We're getting a good response. Uh, that's about all I got. You had any manifestations other than the, the ones last night? Uh, no, not today. Okay, amen. And you know what to do if it happens. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess you'd say back down, don't manifest. That's interesting. You do not have permission to manifest. Leave my body through yawning or coughing, but you will not manifest in my personality or something like that. Be as specific as you want to be you, you do not have permission to do that something like that 
Yes, sir. Or just yell Jesus as loud as you can and go help. That's what I did one time when I first got into this. I heard something jump on the roof one night. It sounded like a 100-pound man, like something just went straight through the roof right into my body. I just go, Father! I was scared, man. I didn't really know what was going on. It just sounded like a 200-pound man jumped on that roof and something just went straight into my body. And I was just like, Daddy! You know? Yes, sir. Next thing I knew, light was flashing and something was hitting the fan, man. I knew that. So, kind of that mentality. If you can't put the words together, you just say, Jesus, help. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, where are your keys? Are right here. All right, get them in your pocket or down your shirt or pants or something. Old Dagon was going for him last night. Took me a little bit to realize what he was doing. All right, let me get a... Oh, I just was fighting a good one with this lady, man, and, and tells me on the way out the door she doesn't want me to use the video. And I just like, oh, man, I we had stabbed this demon through the head with the both crosses. We were lifting him up in the air, and he's just kicking his feet. We were giving him some good torment. I figured out what that sound is. If it can't see your video, that's when it does that. So I'm thinking maybe... You're just always filming in the dark or something. Maybe all there is to it. Uh, you don't ever have light. I'll be glad when you get a, that tablet. We get some good old light. And, but I know it's loud at the house, isn't it? Your girl got up. Your lady friend got kids over there? Yes, she has two boys. And they're over there? Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that explains it, yeah. Yes, yeah, so again, I'm not saying go kick her out. I mean, most women would respect that. How many black men, grown black men, you know, especially ones that are bringing home a paycheck to the old lady, come home and say, we need to quit having relations until we get married? None. Not to stereotype, but you know it and I know it. Yes. You should have laughed at that. That's actually funny, man. You can't laugh till you get these demons out, can you? <laughs> All right, you're looking around. They make you paranoid? Oh, no. I was just looking at the vehicle that passed by. But you ain't got nothing in the car you ain't supposed to have, right? I lost. Okay. All right, so last night was Darlon, death. He was the one who said he was going to kill you. And I said, oh, yeah? So I want to kill him. I want to see if he's there. I'm going to call him, so uh, I've got the ball. You give me permission to temporary authority to do deliverance and healing and to come against the enemy. In Jesus' name? Yes, sir. All right. In the name of mighty Jesus, I command any evil spirits that are remaining, especially if we got a gatekeeper there or head principality there, and you're inside him, and you still think you have authority, then you manifest now in the name of Jesus. If you are not there, I want to talk to Darlon. Yeah, speak in the name of Jesus. Who are you? Who we got? In the name of Jesus. Who we got? State your name in the name of mighty Jesus. What's your name? Right now. What's your name in the name of Jesus right now? Speak. Speak up. Can't hear you. In the name of Jesus, what is your name, demon, right now, in the name of Jesus? Speak up. Look at me. Right here in the eyes. What's your name? It's Trojan. Trojan. Trojan, what is your area of torment in the name of Jesus? I torment him with 
sicknesses. I keep his sinuses checking up so he can't breathe. Torment with sicknesses in particular, you're the expert on sinuses. Yeah. yeah, what's that sound? Sounds like a horse. Are you half horse? Are you half horse? So you're half horse, half man? In the name of Jesus, answer. So you've got the trunk of a of a man and the uh, and the body of a horse. Yeah. Uh, Nephilim giants made you, didn't they? Yeah. Do you hate them for that? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you'd like to kill them for that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you would. You got any uh, root spirits underneath you? Uh, Underneath you? Many under me. Well, you're not under, uh, you're not over, uh, what's his face? The head guy, the gatekeeper on this deal was, uh, uh, not Santos, but the one above him. Oh, I forget his name. Starts with a K or starts with an A. Akiban or Akiban. He was the gatekeeper, was he not, in the name of Jesus? Okay. I need all these root spirits out underneath you. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to go. You don't need to go. Half horse, man. What a continent, what country were you from when you were uh, uh, living on earth? Where, what continent in the name of Jesus? Were Greeks or what? Around Rome, Italy? Hmm. How many years ago were you on earth in the name of Jesus? Got it. Alright, listen. You got to go. You know you got to go. In the name of Jesus, I cancel all these spirits underneath Trojan or whatever his name is that causes this sinus problem. In the name of Jesus, up and out. All root spirits underneath Trojan, go. Father, I ask for Holy Ghost fire right now. In the name of Jesus, coming down on Trojan, coming down on every one of them that causes all this problem with sinus and sickness. I just start covering him with the blood of Jesus. Out, Trojan, right now. In the name of Jesus, get in the pit. In the name of Jesus, get out. Go, go, go. In the name of Jesus, up and get out. In the name of Jesus, you're going to the pit right now. I put the blood of Jesus all over his legs, back. Neck, hallelujah. Who we got there? In the name of Jesus, up and out, Trojan. All these root spirits, let's go. In the name of Jesus, to the pit. You cannot stay. Give up, the, give up this house right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of mighty Jesus. Out. Every one of you. Let's go. Up and out. Let's go. In the name of Jesus. Let's go, horse. Let's go, Trojan horse. Let's go. All these problems with sinuses and sicknesses and all these decoys. Come on, Trojan horse. Let's go in the name of mighty Jesus. Let's go in the name of mighty Jesus. No, you'll be choking him in the name of Jesus. Stop choking him. Angels, clear his windpipe, please, in the name of Jesus. Chester, that's you. Yes, sir. He, was he choking you? Yes, sir. <coughs> it's me. Yeah. I'll wait till your head clears a little bit. Wait, wait, did you feel him choking you? Yes, sir. Like, <clears throat> coming up out my chest. And out my nose. You got sinus problems? I think so. Well, I mean, no, I meant 
uh, in general where you got some kind of torment or sicknesses. You know, people got bad sinuses. Their nose is always clogged and running and are, are congested and they can't breathe. Are you one of them types? Yeah, I have congested sinuses all the time. Well, guess what? That was him. Did you were you able to hear that part? I don't think he was like he was like like my I I can feel the part with it was like some with, with whatever it was the spirit or whatever it had me like neighing like a horse and I and I couldn't control it. <laughs> he was half horse, half man. The Nephilim giants made those things through uh, you know, messing with the DNA. His name was Trojan. And, I tell you what I, I didn't know this though with this series. <laughs> yeah, no, it's for real. He was half horse, half man, and I said, I bet you hate those Nephilim, the fallen angels, for messing with the DNA and doing that. And he goes, yes. Think about it. They made that poor thing half horse, half man. Can you imagine? And obviously he died or somebody slaughtered it or something. And uh, then his spirit is left. Well, God's not going to take him up because he's not perfect. Is that you? Yes, sir, that's me. Okay, because you scare me. When it goes dark and I start hearing the keys now, I start thinking something's in control of the vehicle. Okay. No, it just, um, it, this, um, <clears throat> my light goes out after a while. It's got like a time on it. Yeah, so just start her up if need be. Or get some kind of little inverter you put in the uh, cigarette lighter and maybe we'll put a light on. I don't know. But anyway, that's what was uh, causing all your sinus problems all your life. Uh, his area of torment is sicknesses, in particular his sinuses. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know demon control that kind of stuff. <clears throat> oh, yeah, all sickness is demonic. The only legit sickness is falling down and breaking your arm or cutting yourself, and that ain't sick. Everything is cancer, all that. Every bit of it, man. Wow. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, you go to God for all your healing. All your healing, yeah. So that's exactly what he does to you. They're getting weaker and weaker. Think about it. I said, manifest now the gatekeeper or the highest demonic entity. So we're now down to that. So we're getting a lot of progress. Darlon didn't come through. See, Darlon probably thrown out last night but came back un invited illegally probably got in trouble my papa came in and did that that's just an attack without authority we're throwing out things that have had a legal basis all right let's try to get us one more so this trojan he's gone that's tormenting with sickness and sinuses All right. In the name of Jesus, we command the next demonic principality, demon, whatever you are, whatever rank, next one in line that needs to go, come up in the name of Jesus and manifest right now. You're coming out. Let's go in the name of Jesus. Let's go. No matter what area, it can be sexual sin, can be anything, a physical infirmity, it can be trauma. It can be telling stories. We don't, we don't care. Deceiving him. Deception. Unbelief. Religious confusion. Lying to him. There we go. Who we got in the name of Jesus? Speak up right now. What's your name? In the name of Jesus. What are you? So clearly, I'm going to put some, knock some sense into you now. In the name of Jesus, what's your name? Ichabod? Ichabod. We've met before, have we not? In the name of Jesus. Ichabod, have we met before in the name of Jesus? I thought we had. I thought we had. I think an old Dwayne's or something. Or is that Iskaba I'm thinking about? What's your area of torment, Ikba? Ikba. I am the ego. 
Ichbod, what is your area of torment in the name of Jesus? Answer me. I make him lazy. <laughs> make him lazy. Uh, make him lazy. That's why you make him tired at work. I see. Are you the one making him tired at work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not going to be able to do that anymore, Ichbod. I'm going to command right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you and all root spirits underneath you come out. I cancel your assignment right now in the name of Jesus Christ. No more. I start putting the blood of Jesus on him. You will sit still. You will stay right there. Holy angels, I command that Ichbod come out now in the name of mighty Jesus. I put the blood of Jesus all over Ichbod's body. Hallelujah. You are eating that up, Ichbod. The blood of Jesus, the mighty blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. We put it all over the body. We put it all over the brain, and we start breaking the brain up. Ichbod, in the name of Jesus, I want all spirits underneath you out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Start fouling out every one of you in the name of Jesus. Get out. It, yep, yawning. Let's go. Come out through yawning. Come out through the nose. Come out through the mouth. Let's go. All oh, root spirits. Hallelujah. Kneel and bow to the Holy One. It says in Ephesians 1.21 that Jesus' name is above all principality, might, powers, and dominion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just worship the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And Jesus came unto them saying, All power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. In Matthew 28, 18, he also said, Behold, Ichbod, I give unto my children the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Are those uh, root spirits coming out, Ichbod? Answer now in the name of Jesus. They better be. Start yawning. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, Ichbod, how did you get authority to come into him, into Chester? How did you get legal right? In the name of Jesus, answer. He come in by his disobedience to his mother. Disobedience to his mom gave you legal right to come in? Yeah. Hey, Bob, how long ago were you on the earth in the body in the name of Jesus? I was there eight, eight years ago. Eight years ago? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. One thousand five hundred years ago? Yeah. What were you? You were a human or some kind of, what were you in the name of Jesus? A sorcerer. What's that noise? Is that like some kind of rat chewing on you? What's that? What's that sound in the name of Jesus? It's an ancient language. What language is that in the name of Jesus? Ancient Goth language. An ancient Goth language. Yeah, well, you better not be speaking a curse over me, so speak English. I don't put one back on you by the blood of Jesus. I put all over you and down inside your body, Ichbod, the blood of Jesus up in your nose and your eyes, all over you, the mighty goodness and love and patience and kindness of Jesus Christ just eats up all that darkness and all that sorcery right now. The light of Jesus. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is everything. He is the Holy One. You cannot even stand in His presence, Ichabod. All root spirits underneath you come out now in the name of Jesus. I want them up. Let's go right now in the name of mighty 
Jesus, let's go. And you're going to get you a front row seat down there on the lake for practicing that sorcery. You can get you one of them cushion rafts and be floating around in the lava lake, but you coming out, every one of them, get out in the name of Jesus. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Get on to that pit right now, Iqbal, in the name of Jesus. Every one of these dang root spirits underneath you, I cancel their assignment in the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus, and I start putting the blood of Jesus all over you and I start speaking the Holy Spirit language which goes He is the great and mighty God. He is Jehovah. He is Jehovah Nietzsche, my victory, my banner that goes before me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. No choking. Open up. Take your hands off his throat right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you. Angels, open up his airway so he can breathe. Ichbod, you better be going. Ichbod, who is that I got right there? Is that you, Chester? Yes, sir. Okay. Was he choking you? A little bit. I got you. That was an interesting one. That was a, you ready for some information? Uh, yes. A <clears throat> little interesting. That was Ichbod. He lived 1,500 years ago. Um, he was a sorcerer. Uh, is that you with the keys, uh, Chester? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, making sure. Remember, I can't see, so I'm trying to protect you. Lived 1,500 years ago. He kept speaking this language going so I thought he was trying to put a curse on me and I said in the name of Jesus tell me now what that language is he was grown and he didn't want to give it out it was an ancient goth language and he was a sorcerer 1500 years ago so it shows that dead humans can end up becoming fully dark and end up becoming demonic see so he's a he's a follower of Satan. So anybody into sorcery, anybody, these, all these people hung up in this new age stuff, yoga, martial arts, all that stuff, all that stuff's demonic, man. All that stuff's demonic. That's like being an occultic, satanic stuff. So there he was inside you with some authority, speaking in an ancient language. Guess what he does to you? Light drum roll in the back, <laughs> makes you tired and lazy. I said, you're the one been putting him to sleep at work. And he says, <laughs> he's just all impressed with himself, you know. Uh. <laughs> <My God. clears throat> See, it's all very, very real. See, and you'd have to go to a psychiatrist and spend just thousands on pills, and you'd go for years, and nothing would ever improve. You just get like you're walking around like this, all stoned on pills. And uh, Chester, how do you feel? Ah, oh, stoned as a bat, Doc. How do you feel? You know, well, I feel rich. I'm making four hundred fifty dollars an hour, asking you how you feel and giving you pills. Yes, sir. That's a pretty neat thing, Doc. Thank you. You know. Hence, now, why well, I don't understand why people getting deliverance aren't just literally doing everything they can to contribute as much as they can. See, it's, it can only be the enemy that just screws people up, you know. can only be the enemy. So that was Ichbod. He's out. And, um, oh, he got legal authority to come in. You're going to like this. Disobedience to your mom, which is a big one of Papa's. It's like the fifth commandment disobedience to your mother. Iqbal just came rolling in. Legal authority. Yep. Trying to mix the questions up so the viewers too, you're coming, becoming quite famous on the channel. Uh, I'm teasing. I mean, I don't have any traffic, but people are really learning a lot. They're really, this has really been good. So I'm trying to mix up the questions. Yep, 1,500 years ago, he was a sorcerer, and that was about the height of the Goth period, about 500 A.D. That's about right, because the Goths overthrew Rome. That's right. Wow. Yeah, wow. Disobedience to your mom, and he's right in there. My Lord. <clears throat> yeah, because, you know, how could I know you had sinus problems? You know, the one before. Yep. 
And he was a half horse, half man thing or something because he kept whinnying like a horse. And I said, are you a animal, like half horse, man thing? And he said, yes. Those really existed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all those giants and all that stuff, yeah. See, the, the fallen angels in Genesis 6, they came down and screwed up the DNA. Messed with the DNA and made uh, all kinds of things. And then their children, when they mated with women, made giants. One of them we pulled out of you was 26 feet. That was the very first one, I think. Occubon or something. He was 26 feet, I think, when he was on Earth. Because who else could lift all those boulders, man, on some of these big old sites they got? We don't even have machines that could lift them. Not even today. So it had to be like five or six dudes that, you know, were 26 to 36 feet lifting those stones. Yeah. All it could be. Mm -mm -mm. Did you have less bad dreams last night? Uh, I, I don't think, they, I don't, I don't, I know I remember, I don't even remember dreaming last night. Yeah, good, 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 good. Well, you got 20 minutes to work. We pulled out three. You call in an evening or do one more? We can do one more, Doc, if you feel up to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I only got one more call after this. Okay, you ready? Yes. Where are your keys? They right here. Get them in your pocket. No pocket knives around, anything like that. No, sir. All right, in the name of Jesus, we are taking authority right now according to the power given us in Matthew 10.1. And Jesus gave us power over unclean spirits to cast them out. And we command that the next demonic entity in line that would be lower in rank of Ichbod come up now. And manifest in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's go. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Who is this in the name of Jesus? Answer now. Keep practicing. In the name of Jesus, what is your name? Libra, what is your area of torment in the name of Jesus? Uh, torment is sex drive. Torment, sex drive. You increase the sex drive or diminish it in the name of Jesus? It's sex drive. You increase it? Yeah. Torment, sex drive. How many years ago were you in the body on the earth, Libra? Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred years ago? Yeah. What were you, a man? Yes. Are you Nephilim in the name of Jesus? So we're getting down to uh, people now. African voodoo doctor. Let me ask you a question, uh, Libra, because you know uh, you already uh, you already know the situation here. If you had it to do over again uh, back on Earth, would you do it different in the name of Jesus? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you hate him all for it, don't you? All this evil. Yeah, you know all that evil's wrong, don't you, in the name of Jesus? Yeah. All that shame and guilt. It is. Yeah, does the fecal torment, does Satan uh, torment you, or he just reassign you once you get down there in the name of Jesus? He'll just reassign you? Or are you stuck down there in the name of Jesus? How many root spirits you got underneath you? In the name of Jesus.
of Jesus. Tell me. Ah, right, stay in that car in the name of Jesus right now. Angels, lock him in that car. Put him in that seat right now in the name of Jesus. Who is that? Chester? Chester! Okay. You scared me, man. Was that you? Well, I ask you to be with him, please. I'll let him work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What's going on? Was that the police? No, sir. I apologize. That was my that was my supervisor. Stop. Everything everything okay? Yes, sir. He just you just checking on me. Well, you came out of that pretty good. That was, I don't know how you did, but you were in the form of something called Libra, and then you just came right out of it or something. Do you remember? Yes, sir. How'd you do it? I'm not sure. <laughs> you saw him, and uh, I think maybe the Lord did it. Uh, you were in the form of, or Libra was, you were, in Libra was coming through you. He is an African voodoo witch doctor that lived 1800 years ago he torments your sex drive and the way he does it is he increases it <laughs> so does that make any sense that it is messed with at times like that up and down yeah it does okay it do. and um it started getting kind of personal uh awesome footage i said libra in the name of jesus if you had it to do over again, your life on earth, would you do it differently? And he just groaned and goes, yes. And I said, all that evil. And he just, I hate him for it. And then he just started talking and said, it's dark down there. It's just nothing but evil and torment. And obviously, I can't show any emotion or compassion. And I just said, uh, once you're down there with Satan, uh, the fecal just reassign you, or you got to stay. And he paused, and he goes, he got to stay. Hmm. And I was just about to send him and the spirits to the pit, but uh, then all of a sudden that happened. So I think he's still there. Um, I don't know. You want? I don't. I don't know. You want to hit it tomorrow day? What you want to do? We can go hit it. No. All right, we got 13 minutes, so you got to be at work. You all right? Yes. Yes, sir, I'm fine. All right. You, you ready? I can't tell if it hurts you when you go in and out of this. See, look, you know, you're making all kinds of noises and faces, so I guess it's not hurting you. No, it don't hurt. It's just <clears throat> like my throat. You be rashy, like. <clears throat> you know why? You're using vocal cords that you've never used. I mean, you're, you've are you you've covered a range from so low. One of those, that one would... <clears throat> Yes, I mean his voice just real deep, like, and then sometimes they're just so high, it's unbelievable. So you're using chords you've never used, I would think. So that's probably why, because you're saying your throat's been feeling tender during the day and stuff. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, you're hitting a range from just. And let's change the, the thing of my Lord and oh God and all that to like oh gosh and stuff because we don't want Papa thinking we're being, what's the word, sacrilegious or something like that? Yes. Yeah, say oh gosh or I don't know, come up with something. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. Keys are uh, secure? Yes, sir. Libra in the name of Jesus. We got to finish our business. You know what's going on. Let's start sending out everything underneath you. All root spirits. Let's go right now. They got to go. They got to go. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Libra, they got to go. You got to get all those root spirits out underneath you. How many you got under you? About a legion of them? Yeah. All right. 
Everything under Libra, I cancel the assignment right now in the name of Jesus. All those spirits in charge of torment and his sex drive, you go to the pit now. In the name of Jesus, holy angels, let's start taking them out. Taking them out. Libra, you got to go. You got to go right with them. You know that in the name of mighty Jesus. It is over. You have run on this earth for 1,800 years, but it's done. In the name of Jesus, I sentence you to the pit. You've got to go. You will take every root spirit with you. You will take all torment with you of his sex drive on Chester. In the name of Jesus, up and out. In the name of mighty Jesus, I put the blood of Jesus all on the stomach. Let's go. Up and out. In the name of Jesus, let's go. In the name of Jesus, Father, I ask that the blood of Jesus be at appropriate temperature on the stomach, running out all spirits, all demons, all Libras, all Ichabods, every one of them, all Trojans, in the name of Jesus, come up right now. Uh, release his throat in the name of Jesus, demon. There will be no choking of Chester. You will not choke him in the name of Jesus, but you will come up and you will go to the pit, all of you, in the name of Jesus. Chester, that's you. Come out, Libra. All of them. Send them to the pit. Let's go. No choking in the name of Jesus. Demons stop choking him. All demons stop choking Chester. Leave the door, uh, the breathe away, the pipe open. Spirits, you line up a thousand wide and start coming out through the yawning. Do not choke him. Angels, please make sure Chester's windpipe is open, please. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out, come up. Thousand wide in the name of Jesus. Let's go. All oh, legions underneath. Is that you, Chester? Yes, sir. Okay. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What was that like? Were they choking you? I'm wondering if it's all of them so many. He said he had about a legion under him. So that's 6,000 that got to come out. And I'm wondering if when I throw them in the pit, they're just coming out all at once. And I wonder if that's creating the choking, just blocking up that pipe. I'm not sure, but I know. <laughs> I've never seen it like this, though. Well, we've been doing it since Sunday. I know it, but I'm just saying I, it, this stuff is it's new to me because I, when I used to see it on television, I used to think it was <clears throat> a game or something. Well, I think, you know, people were just, you know, just doing something, you know, just to be seen. Oh, you know? I see. Getting attention. Yeah, I thought that, you know, the manifestation were, were, were fake. But <clears throat> as you can see, they're real. You're not much of the game playing type, Chester. I got the feeling right. So, <laughs> yeah, you're not. I mean, I'm sure you could if you set your mind to it. I'm just saying you're not a real vocal or loud person from what I can see, so I don't think you're... And, you know, who could make up these names? That's the other thing. You'd have to... I mean, I can't spell half of them. I spend half the time beating on them, trying to get the spelling out of them, and then they turn around and spell it. And then you look it up, and it's right. You look it up on the Internet, and that's right. That's how you spell it. Mm. They're smart boogers. All right, brother. Well, I love you, man. Let me say a prayer for you. And I, like I said, I'm sorry I beat on you about the money, but, you know, I'm just a man. Well, I tell you what, you all, uh, I thank God for you. you know, I, I mean, like I, I was trying to explain to you earlier, and, and I, since you said that it made sense, because you were telling me about how a lot of these spiritual advisors be devil worshiping and stuff they sell. <clears throat> you know, I, I had started trying to, you know, deal with this lady. She's supposed to be a spiritual advisor. Mm. But every time she comes, she was telling me something about big money that she needed. But, you know, she never really was trying to work with me and stuff. She was just basically, it was basically was like, leave me out to dry. But, it, but she kept telling me things that she needed to gather, you know, to, <clears throat> you know, to get me free. And I wonder what, what is it, what is it that you could gather, you know, for deliverance like that, you know. Well, what was she telling you? I mean, she's just an old hustler con game, right? 
kind of like that. She just kept saying it was things that she had to get. She had to get pieces of this and pieces of that, but she never would really tell me what it was that she had to get. Kinda well, that's just a witch doctor. Yeah, that's just pure Satanism, man. Yes. The piece of chicken legs and all that, you just end up in that same place that Libra's at right there, being somebody's uh, demon 1,800 years from now. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, yeah, it's very real. All right, Father, I just ask that you protect um, my precious brother in Christ, Chester. Keep him awake. Keep him alert. I ask that a bloodline be around him, Lord Jesus, and protecting him, that nothing drive that vehicle, nothing take over his consciousness until we command it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just thank you for this amazing deliverance tonight. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, my man, we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right.